Hey there, my beautiful friends. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Check it out, friends. We're back with episode 6 of The Message. We're going to be looking at Genesis 16, 17, and 18 today. I can't wait to share them with you guys. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Rex. Man, Jesus Christ saved me from just an awful life, guys. I was so strung out, so addicted for over two decades of my life. Heroin, methamphetamines, prescription pills, cocaine, whatever it was, you name it. And a ton of other debauchery and darkness on top of it. But Jesus made a way for me, amen. He made a way where every program I had tried couldn't make a way. He made a way where being locked up wasn't able to make a way. Jesus makes a way where there is no way, amen. Guys, let's get into some prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today, Lord, so appreciative for this day that you have blessed us with, so grateful for the breath in our lungs, Lord, so so filled with gratitude for a chance to serve you and to grow with you, Father God. We ask that this video today be an inspiration to drive us deeper into Scripture on our own time, that we would use this contemporary retelling or contemporary translation to, to, to push us deep into Scripture in, in our King James or our New King James or our New Living Translation or our English Standard or whatever it is, but just to drive us deeper into scriptural study with you, Father God, that we may grow with you and that that may foster a walk of faith that is pleasing to your throne. Uh, we would also ask, Father God, for this video to make its way to the eyes and ears and souls of anyone not yet at the foot of the cross out there, anyone backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross, Lord, that they could be revived, reinvigorated, and pulled back into your loving arms, Father God, where they may find true purpose in a fallen world. We want to pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves. Lord, we pray all of this in your beautiful, gracious, merciful, and saving name. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus, in your eternal name we pray. Amen, guys. Let's get into this. All right, friends? You get a drink real quick. Genesis 16. Sarai, Abram's wife, hadn't yet produced a child. She had an Egyptian maid named Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, God has not seen fit to let me have a child. Sleep with my maid. Maybe I can get family from her. Abram agreed to do what Sarai said. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took her Egyptian maid Hagar and gave her to her husband Abram as a wife. Abram had been living ten years in Canaan when this took place. He slept with Hagar and she got pregnant. When Hagar learned she was pregnant, she looked down on her mistress. Sarai told Abram, it's all your fault that I'm suffering this abuse. I put my maid in bed with you and the minute she knows she's pregnant, she treats me like I'm nothing. May God decide which of us is right. You decide, said Abram. Your maid is your business. Sarai was abusive to Hagar, and Hagar ran away. An angel of God found her beside a spring in the desert. It was the spring on the road to shore. He said, Hagar, maid of Sarai, what are you doing here? She said, I'm running away from Sarai, my mistress. The angel of God said, go back to your mistress, put up with her abuse. He continued, I'm going to give you a big family, children past counting. From this pregnancy, you'll get a son. Name him Ishmael. For God heard you. God answered you. He'll be a bucking bronco of a man, a real fighter, fighting and being fought, always stirring up trouble, always at odds with his family. She answered God by name, praying to the God who spoke to her, You're the God who sees me. Yes, he saw me and then I saw him. That's how the desert spring got named God Alive Sees Me Spring. That spring is still there between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar gave Abram a son. Abram named him Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar gave him his son, Ishmael. Chapter 17, friends. I love you all so much. When Abram was 99 years old, God showed up and said to him, I am the strong God. Live entirely before me, live to the hilt. 
I'll make a covenant between us, and I'll give you a huge family. Overwhelmed, Abram fell flat upon his face. Then God said to him, This is my covenant with you. You'll be the father of many nations. Your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, meaning that I'm making you the father of many nations. I'll make you a father of fathers. I'll make nations from you. Kings will issue from you. I'm establishing my covenant between me and you, a covenant that includes your descendants, a covenant that goes on and on and on, a covenant that commits me to be your God and the God of your descendants, and I'm giving you and your descendants this land where you're now just camping, the whole country of Canaan to own forever, and I'll be their God. God continued to Abraham, and you, you will honor my covenant, you and your descendants, generation upon generation. This is the covenant that you are to honor, the covenant that pulls in all your descendants. Circumcise every male. Circumcise by cutting off the foreskin of the penis. It will be the sign of the covenant between us. Every male baby will be circumcised when he is eight days old, generation after generation. This includes houseborn slaves and slaves bought from outsiders who are not blood kin. Make sure you circumcise both your own children and anyone brought in from the outside. That way my covenant will be cut into your body, a permanent mark of my permanent covenant. An uncircumcised male, one who has not had the foreskin of his penis cut off, will be cut off from his people, for he has broken my covenant. God continued speaking to Abraham, and Sarai, your wife, don't call her Sarai any longer, call her Sarah. I'll bless her, yes. I'll give you a son by her. Oh, how I will bless her. Nations will come from her. Kings of nations will come from her. Abraham fell flat on his face, and then he laughed, thinking, Can a hundred-year-old man father a son? And can Sarah, at ninety years, have a baby? Recovering, Abram said to God, Oh, keep Ishmael alive and well before you. But God said, that's not what I mean. Your wife, Sarah, will have a baby, a son. Name him Isaac, which means laughter. I'll establish my covenant with him and his descendants, a covenant that lasts forever. You know, let's just stop right there. Let's appreciate the, the beautiful character of God. That God gives Abraham this wonderful news, and Abraham is just so shocked and Coming from an honest place, he just laughs. But God doesn't take offense to that. Instead, God says, look, I'm still going to give you the child, but I want you to do me a favor. I want you to name this child Isaac, or laughter. How wonderful is that? And Ishmael, yes, I heard your prayer from him. I'll also bless him. I'll make sure he has plenty of children, a huge family. He'll father 12 princes. I'll make him a great nation, but I'll establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah will give you about this time next year. God finished speaking with Abraham and left. Then Abraham took his son Ishmael and all his servants, whether houseborn or purchased, every male in his household, and circumcised them, cutting off their foreskin that very day, just as God had told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. His son Ishmael was 13 years old when he was circumcised. Abraham and Ishmael were circumcised the same day together with all the servants of his household. Those born there and those purchased from outsiders, all were circumcised with him. <coughs> all right, friends. Chapter 18. Man, I love sharing with you guys. I'm so grateful to be able to grow with you guys as believers. But remember, I want you guys to take these chapters, take this as inspiration, dig into Scripture on your own time, all right? God appeared to Abraham at the Oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent. It was the hottest part of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing. He ran from his tent to greet them and bowed before them. He said, Master, if it please you, stop for a while with your servant. I'll get some water so you can wash your feet. Please, rest under this tree. I'll get some food to refresh you on your way since your travels have brought you across my path. They said, certainly, yes, go ahead. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. He said, hurry, get three cups of the best flour, knead it, and make bread. 
Then Abraham ran to the cattle pen and picked out a nice plump calf and gave it to the servant who lost no time getting it ready. Then he got curds and milk, brought them with the calf that had been roasted, set the meal before the men and stood there under the tree while they ate. The men said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? He said, in the tent. One of them said, I'm coming back about this time next year. When I arrive, your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was listening at the tent opening just behind the man. Abraham and Sarah were old by this time, very old. Sarah was far past the age for having babies. Sarah herself laughed within. An old woman like me? Get pregnant. With this old man of a husband? God said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh, saying, me, have a baby, an old woman like me? Is anything too hard for God? I'll be back about this time next year, and Sarah will have a baby. Sarah lied. She said, I didn't laugh because she was afraid. But he said, yes, yes, you did. You laughed. When the men got up to leave, they set off for Sodom. Abraham walked with them to say goodbye. Then God said, shall I keep back from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham is going to become a large and strong nation. All the nations of the world are going to find themselves blessed through him. Yes, I've settled on him as the one to train his children and future family to observe God's way of life, live kindly and generously and fairly, so that God can complete in Abraham what he promised him. God continued... The cries of the victims in Sodom and Gomorrah are deafening. The sin of those cities is immense. I'm going down to see for myself. To see if what they're doing is as bad as it sounds, then I'll know. The men set out for Sodom, but Abraham stood in God's path, blocking his way. Abraham confronted him. Are you serious? Are you planning on getting rid of the good people right along with the bad? What if... What, what if there are... Fifty decent people left in the city. Will you lump the good with the bad and get rid of the lot? Wouldn't you spare the city for the sake of those fifty innocents? I can't believe you'd do that. Kill off the good and the bad alike as if there were no difference between them. Doesn't the judge of all the earth judge with justice? God said, if I find fifty decent people in the city of Sodom, I'll spare the place just for them. Abraham came back. Do I, a mere mortal made from a handful of dirt, Dare open my mouth again to my master? <coughs> Excuse me. What if the fifty fall short by five? Would you destroy the city because of those missing five? He said, I won't destroy it if there are forty-five. Abraham spoke up again. What if you only find forty? Neither will I destroy it, destroy it for the forty. He said, Master... Don't be irritated with me. But what if only 30 are found? No, I won't do it if I find 30. He pushed on. I know I'm trying your patience, Master. But how about for 20? I won't destroy it for 20. He wouldn't quit. Please, Master, don't get angry. This is the last time. What if you only come up with 10? For the sake of only ten, I won't destroy the city. When God finished talking with Abraham, he left, and Abraham went home. All right, guys, I love you all so much, man. Thank you for continuing to let me share with you. If you enjoyed that, I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. Hit that button, give the bell icon a tap. You'll get notified every time I drop a new video, which is seven brand new YouTube shorts every week. Three brand new long format videos every week for a total of 10 on the channel. Uh, give a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. I would be so grateful to you. It really helps drive engagement. It really helps to grow the channel and to get the message in front of more people if you feel it's a message worth hearing or one that you enjoy. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, drop them in the comment section. Prayer requests, drop them in the comment section. If you are a born-again child of God, and I get the feeling that many of you are, then I want you to tell your witness in this comment section, your testimony to the goodness of God in your life. Tell it here. Tell it out there, guys. I love you. Father God loves you even more. Whatever you're going to do, get out there in the world. Be a bold and active participant in the Great Commission. Tell the devil and the workers of the devil, hands off. I am a child of God. I am spoken for. I have been raised to new life, and I'm here to get it for God. I'll see you guys in the next one.